going on guys so uh we're gonna start with balancing chemical equations today yeah so yesterday uh and monday monday and tuesday we kind of dealt with um formula writing and word equation writing so chemical equation and word equations today we're going to take our chemical equations and then we're going to start to balance them so chemical equations they are a Shorthand way of reporting the basic details uh, of a chemical reaction. The starting substance, starting or original substance uh, in a reaction is going to always be placed on the left side of the equation. The substances that are created or, or formed during this uh, a chemical equation uh, are always going to be placed to the right of the arrow sign or yield sign. All right, so they're always going to be on the right of the equation. So this arrow can be read as yields or reacts to produce either either way now so we have we have all this stuff here sorry our coefficients those guys they are used all right to balance they are used to balance the equations Uh, so coefficients, they represent the number of molecules, uh, formula units, or atoms of the substance. Now, the coefficients are definitely going to play a huge, huge part in the law of conservation of mass. Conservation of mass, pretty much, guys, says that mass can never be created or destroyed. So what you put in has to equal what you put out. Your starting ingredients have to equal, all right, your product. So right now in this equation here, you see that we have zinc on this side. We have a hydrogen and chlorine. We have zinc, chlorine, and hydrogen over here as well. Cool. But they have to have the exact same amounts. There has to be as many zinc all right, atoms as there is on the left side as there is on the right. Hydrogen at left and right. Chlorine left and right. They have to be. They have to have to have to be. So before we start those... We're going to, all right, start these things by what we're going to say. We're going to start by making uh, an element inventory. Good. Sorry. So we're going to draw boxes around each formula in the equation cool next all right you should usually begin with all right one molecule or one formula unit of the substance that is containing the most amount of atoms all right the most atoms that we have because if you can balance that, the biggest one first, all right, then it kind of trickles down and becomes a little bit easier. Another rule. Um, you're going to balance polyatomic ions that appear on, it has to appear on both sides, both sides of the equation as a single unit, all right? So both sides of the equation unchanged. If, you know, you sit like here, 
you have K, NO3, so you have nitrate. Over here, it's not NO3. So I would have to separate each of these individual elements, and we'll get an example of that in a second. Um, and then you're going to definitely want to probably balance your, your hydrogen and oxygen last. So atoms that are by themselves, like this O2, right? You see it's not in the compound. Those guys, generally, we can balance them last because we put a coefficient in front of them. It's not going to affect anybody else. Uh, other things, if you have something like this, where you have an O that's in a one of the compounds here, and on the same side of the equation, you have another oxygen. When we're doing our chemical inventory, you're going to want to split them. And I'll show that in one of the examples on the front side. All right, so let's first go over and take a look at our zinc. Zinc is going to react here with hydrochloric acid to form zinc chloride and hydrogen. So a chemical inventory would be something that looks like Zn. Okay, you have then H and you have Cl. How many zincs do we have? One. How many hydrogens? One. How many chlorines? One. So that's the left side of the equation. Right side of the equation. Zn. How many Zn's do we have? Uh, just one. How many hydrogens do we have? There are two. And how many chlorine do we have? There is also two. Okay. This H by himself, you want to try and balance him last because he's by himself. And if you change a, a coefficient, nothing else is going to happen. Okay, so let's just put tiny little boxes around everybody. Anyway, just getting a good habit of doing this to separate everything. All right. Right now, my zincs are balanced. I have one and one. My hydrogen are not, and neither are my chlorine. So you need to get the same amount of hydrogens, total hydrogens on one side as on the others, and same with chlorine. So it doesn't matter necessarily who you start with. It says usually you start with or end your, you know, hydrogen or whatever last. So if I wanted to make this chlorine a 1 to a 2, I would have to multiply it by a 2. Whatever you multiply, I underline. Because that right there, that piece is going to become the coefficient that goes in front of, all right, your formula piece there. Now, this coefficient applies to everything that's inside the, that box. So it's not just applying itself to the chlorine. It's also applying itself to the hydrogen. So that hydrogen also has to get multiplied by the, uh, that too, which now is going to cause the hydrogen to increase to a total of two atoms. Okay, so maybe I have to then, I maybe would have to change something else over here, but let me take a quick look. Zinc. And zinc, they're both one. Hydrogen is now two, and this side is already two. Chlorine is two, and now chlorine is two. Okay, so this thing is balanced. So if we don't need to put any number, all right, we, you know, quote unquote, we would say it's a one. We don't write ones, just like, all right, in this problem, it was only one hydrogen. You never write a subscript of one. Um, oop, I almost forgot. Almost forgot. This. Very important. Subscripts can never be changed. So subscripts can never be changed um, to balance an equation. only coefficients so the numbers that go in place of you can't just add a subscript of two somewhere or a, a three or whatever to try and balance that is not allowed so we have to do this stuff with the coefficients okay so this next one here you have h sub two o sub two yields all right so we have hydrogen oxygen gives us water cool chemical inventory H and an O. This H has 
two. This O has two. Over here, we have H and O. This H has two. This O has uh, not zero. It has one. All right. Um, so now what? Well, our hydrogen are already balanced, so can't really do anything there. But our oxygen are not. So the only move I have right now to make would be to try and get this auction equal to this auction. So one times two, I'll underline that because that's my coefficient, is going to equal two. So let me put a tiny box around this dude. All right. So since this O is going to need to be multiplied by two, this guy comes the coefficient, not what is comes out as far as the multiplication part. So now this two doesn't just apply to itself, all right? It doesn't just apply to the oxygen in here, it also applies to this hydrogen. So this hydrogen also has to be multiplied by two, which is now changes the total over here to four. So when it was originally balanced, now it's not, so we have to then switch this guy to make sure we have the same amount of hydrogen on one side as we do with the other. So two times what is gonna give me a four? That would be a two. So we underline that, and that will give me four. Since I underlined it, that has to become the coefficient, not four. That's a mistake that a lot of people will wind up making. All right, because if you put four in front of that hydrogen, then it would be four times two. That would be eight, and then it wouldn't be it wouldn't work out. It wouldn't work out. All right, so this would be like a two one two chem chemical ratio here, mole ratio. Okay, so the next one. I'll just put my little boxes here to start. I'm gonna make our element inventory. So we have a C. How many? We have three. We have an H. How many? We have an eight. And we have an O on the side. How many? We have two. All right, on this side over here. C, how many do we have? Just one. Now, you see how the oxygen is in two separate spots on the same side of the equation. In these cases, I have a tendency to find the easiest way is to kind of split them up. So I have this oxygen here, which only has two. Way over here, we have hydrogen, which has two, and this one oxygen. So why do I split it? Some videos don't split, some do. This is the way I found to make it the easiest because if you put a coefficient in front of here, that's going to change just this oxygen it's not going to change this guy over here so if you were to group them together you'd still have to figure a way to split it so just by doing this makes it a little bit easier for me okay dude with the most amount of atoms there's 11 here there's only two there's three there's three so this dude we want to make sure that he's balanced first right so well this carbon i have three I need to have three over here. So I'm going to multiply this carbon by three. Underline. Why do I underline again? Because that means that is going to become my coefficient. So three doesn't apply just to this carbon. It also applies to this oxygen, that O2 guy. So that also gets multiplied by three. Now, we have a total of six oxygen here. We still have just this one right now. Okay, let's see what's up. So right now, carbons are balanced. What about the hydrogens? I have eight over here, and I have two over here. They're not balanced. So I can probably get eight from here if I multiply it by four. Two times four would give me eight. So that would work. So then let me hold on. Let me put the coefficient out in front like that, four. All right, and then what? Well, from here, 
how I would then, let's see, oh, got to do this guy here, this coefficient of four. Give me four oxygen from this guy. Okay. Carbon, three and three, balance. Hydrogen, eight and eight. Hydrogen's a balance. I have two oxygen on this side. How many oxygen do I have total over here? Well, from this oxygen, three times two is six. And from this oxygen, four times one is four. So when you add them together, those two, that is going to give me a total of 10. So I have a total of 10 oxygen atoms over here. I need to have a total of 10 over here. So what can I multiply two by to get a 10? That answer could be a five. I underline that guy because that is the coefficient. Not 10, because if you did, if you put a 10 there, 10 times two is 20, that doesn't work. So you would need the coefficient here of five. Uh, there was a sample equation that I wrote down because I wanted to show an example with this guy here with the polyatomic on both sides. So this isn't on your normal list. You guys would need to write this one in. So we have copper plus silver nitrate is going to yield... copper 2 nitrate and silver. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to box them. Second thing I'm going to do, element inventory. I have a Cu over here. How many? One. I have an Ag. How many? One. There's no subscript after it. Now, NO3, that is a polyatomic ion. So if that polyatomic ion is on both sides unchanged, then you can basically treat it as like a single element. So you can, instead of breaking it down into N and then O, you can do this, NO3. Now, how many NO3s do you see here? There's only one because there's no parentheses afterwards. The other side. Copper, there's only one. This silver, we have only one. And this NO2, or NO3, sorry. We have two of them. So as of right now, coppers are both balanced. The silvers are both balanced. So the only move you have to make right off rip is dealing with this guy. Uh, yeah, to get this to become a two, you'd have to multiply this guy by... O2. Underline it. All right. We do this underline becomes the coefficient for that part of the formula. All right. So that means I'm going to have two nitrates. Cool. They're balanced now. But what happened over here, because the coefficient applies to everything in the box right there, this silver also needs to become or gets uh, multiplied by two here. So now. The silvers were balanced. Now they're not anymore. The nitrates are balanced. The coppers are balanced. Oh, gosh. All right. So now I need to try and get the silvers to balance, which is going to be easy because we have a single silver guy over by himself. So by adding a coefficient to him, it's not going to change anybody else up. So let's see. Make this a two. Bing, bang, boom. Bing, multiply by two. So this would be our balance formula, a one, two, one, two ratio. So we talked about polyatomic that appears the same on both sides of the equation, all right? Unchanged. Well, what if we have an example like this? We have potassium nitrate over here. We have potassium nitrate and oxygen. So we have an NO3 over here. And it is not the same. So now you have to actually split it. So we have a K, we have an N, we have an O. Over here we have a K, we have an N. We have an O, and then we have a secondary guy, so I, that's why I split them up. Let's write them all out. We have 1K, 1N, 3O. We have 1K, 1N, 2 oxygen here, and 2 over here. 
So our potassiums and our uh, nitrate, or I'm sorry, our potassiums and nitrogens, right now they're balanced. The only things that don't work out currently are the oxygens. So sometimes this is why it's very important to do these in pencil because there sometimes may be a little bit of trial, trial and error type of a deal. Um, you're like, all right, well, I'm not 100% sure exactly what to do because I have, all right, this K, this nitrogen are balanced. I have two auction and I have two over here. Remember the single guy, single auction, you're going to want to do by itself last because if you change it, nothing else, you know, gets messed up. So right now, basically this auction and this auction, you would have to figure out a way. All right, well, if I multiply this by two, what, what happens? Like, I'm, that's going to be my guess. I'm just going to be like, all right, let me try multiply one of these things by two and see, and see what happens. It wouldn't make sense to multiply this guy right, right off rip by two because, you know, two times two is four. And then you have four over here. It, whatever. But if I did this three times two, underline, okay, that's going to give me a total of six. Wait a minute, that makes no sense. You're trying to get a total of four. Well, there's no, it has to be a whole number. It can't be like a half of something. So you can't have like 1.5 times three. No, it doesn't work like that. So this two comes here, uh, which then causes this guy to be multiplied by two and this guy. So now we have two potassiums. We have two nitrogens. So that means over here, to balance the potassiums, we'd have to do this by a two. That becomes a coefficient, which means that applies to this N. And only this auction, not the uh, not the last guy by himself. So potassium, balanced. Nitrogen, balanced. Oxygen, well, I have six on the left side. And I have how many total on the right? Good, a total of six. Where you get it from this four and this two, all right? Adding those two together, you're going to get a total of six. We have six and six, so everybody's balance is a two to one ratio. Next step, kind of based off of what we did yesterday, we have to write out, take a word equation and write out our chemical equation. So hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen, the and is like our plus sign. Oxygen combined, all right, to produce, that's going to tell us to put up our yield sign, water. You need to know that water is H2O. All right, so is this correct? The answer is no. Why? Because hydrogen and oxygen are diatomic molecules. And what the heck does that mean? Diatomic will pretty much means di is our prefix for two. Atomic is our atoms. So they have two atoms when they are in a word phrase like this. Hydrogen. All right. So anytime you see a hydrogen and oxygen, there's seven total guys in uh, there are seven total. The easiest way to remember that I call them the Hofbrinkle. It just sounds funny and helps me memorize it. So that stands for our hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, Br would be bromine, I, iodine, N, Nitrogen and Cl fluorine. Anytime you see these guys in a word phrase like that by themselves, they get a subscript of two. So, you know, example would be like hydrogen gets a subscript of two. O. Oh, that looks like a Q right there. O. Oh, would get a subscript of two, they would all get that. So this has to be a sub two, 
So let's get two. So we move your box and do our chemical inventory, but hopefully this looks familiar because we did this on the front page. We did this exact one on the front side. Okay, and it should come out to be a two one two ratio. So we're not gonna do this one right now again. Uh, we're gonna do this last one here. Given the word equation, write out the chemical equation and then balance. So uh, carbon disulfide, you need to be able to make sure you can take these guys and put them into their correct formulas. Carbon disulfide, that would be C sulfide. It would be, all right, that's the anion version or how we would call it the anion version of sulfur. But in a covalent compound, the second element gets the IDE ending. First dude never gets a prefix mono, second guy does, and otherwise they get all the other prefixes. So di is two, so we have CS2, reacts with oxygen. Ah, but remember, O is one of the Hofbrinkles diatomic, so he needs that subscript two. Okay, these react and they produce, so throw up my arrow, carbon dioxide, C, and di is two, so it would be O2. And, plus sign, sulfur dioxide, that would be SO2. Cool. So this is our formula. Let's box these dudes real quick. Okay, and then let's do our inventory. We have a C, we have an S, we have an O. Over here we have a C, we have an O, we have an S and another O. So I'm going to split the O's up. Why? Because if I put a coefficient in front of this dude, it's only going to affect this oxygen, not if they're totally uh, combined. So I like doing it like this and then adding them at the end if needed. 1C, one, one or two S's and two O's over here. 1C, two O's. Is it not a number two? I don't know why I keep doing this. There's a little zero thing there. Uh, so two. S1 and this O as a two. All right. So let's see. Carbons are good. Try and definitely do this auction last. So first move I would do would be try and get the sulfurs balanced. We have two over here and one over here. So we're going to multiply this sulfur by a two. Underline it that becomes its coefficient. Now, remember the coefficient applies to everybody that's in its box. So that means the second option down here also needs to get multiplied by two. So we have a total of four options from that guy. Okay, are my carbon balanced? Yeah, we have one and one. So put a little check mark next to the carbon right now. Sulfur's balanced. We have two and two, yep. All right. What about oxygen? Well, we have a total of two here, correct? Right, we have two here and two, four here. So we have a total of six. So six oxygen on the right side. We only have two on the left. Since it's by itself, if we add a co uh, coefficient here, it's not going to wind up changing anybody else's. So what times two is going to give me a six? Correct. Three. Remember, that is a mistake that some kids will make. Instead of putting a three here, they would accidentally sometimes put a six. They would do all the work and figure everything out. But if they put a six there, it would, in, it would have to be marked incorrect. Because if you had a six as a coefficient, six times two would give us 12. And that doesn't work. All right. Um, very good. And if you can reduce it, it should, right? So if an equation winds up being like two, 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 it should have been already balanced that everything would have just been a one, 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 one. But in this case, it would be a one, three, one, two. We, remember, we just don't write once. All right. Very good.